Hey everybody, it's Bobo the Vulture, and it's time for more Let's Play Extreme Warfare Revenge. Before I do anything else, let me click on the internet real quick and go to EWRevenge.com. Matt Laurent's Matt on the Mat. This is something that Miss B keeps bugging me about, <coughs> saying that uh, Chris Jericho, you know, your your Matt Laurent, I hadn't even noticed because when he kept saying, oh, your guy, he keeps talking about how great um chris jericho is i was of course thinking about the ryland report which is supposed to be the website of my league um but of course that's adam ryland that's the programmer of this game um oh what was that oh technique tactine dragon well let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh what to say here Good report, we have no injuries. John Phoenix. Okay. VCW TV, exciting part of our brand. Jamie Dundee is enjoying his time at Pro Wrestling Noah. <coughs> but yeah, Matt Laurent is our owner. Um, but it says today's articles, Chris Jericho, the greatest wrestler in the world today, examines the evidence of today's Matt on the Mat. It says read more. Um, and he keeps on asking, well, what does he keep saying about Chris Jericho? If you just click read more, it gives you the little bio profile box that you get when you click on somebody in, like, the worker search. It tells you their age and their broad style and what their finisher is and sometimes will tell you, like, if they have a history of locker room issues. Let's be Sean Styles. Takamichinoku. Let's uh, look at the uh, EWR TV guide. I'm on a prime time, baby. All NWAW is doing shows in the graveyard shift. Disco. A-Train spoke out on numerous topics during a two-hour chat session. Like about the time he got beaten to within an inch of his life by Bobo the Vulture. But uh, the fact that he and Big Show were double-teaming Bobo really helped things out in the end. Haha, uh -huh. you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Unless you're watching the stream, I don't know. So yeah, let's, well, we may as well now that we're here. Justice Payne heads to Japan. He thought there were fatties there, but there aren't. Seijin Aki, pressing fans around the world with his high-risk offense. And triple threat. Oh. Kid Vicious and Chris Cash. Hottest rumors on the net. Come on, show me these rumors. Christian Peak does not have a peak of the week. Well, that's terrible. Shawn Michaels is said to uh, be getting ready to leave. Trent Baker is already gone that he's already been fired from VC Dub. That's not true. Are Miss Vanessa and Enigma a couple? No. If they married, all wrestlers would be managed by the same family. They tried to keep it a secret, but wrestling heat were tipped off by an insider. I see. <coughs> Canadian Golden Combat. Cult level run by Terry Taylor. So they are kind of competitors to us. Although we are still regional, I guess. So not entirely. But their star is Christopher Daniels, who is their most over and most talented performer. Christopher Daniels is a pretty good guy. A good wrestler. I have no idea whether he's, like, a fine gentleman. Yeah, 48 workers, 13 staff members, no TV shows. Who are the five best announcers out there? Well, not my guys, certainly. DDP, calling the matches for ROH. The soundtrack for today's column is Happenstance by Fozzy, which of course was uh, an album that uh, Chris Jericho was on WWE slash F pushing because, of course, Fozzy is the band he's in. So there you go. More Chris Jericho. Also, who do you think is the best all-rounder? Chris Jericho, apparently. Who do you think least deserves their popul uh, popularity? Hardcore Holly? Oh, okay. 
Ed T. Cactus. Mac Classic. You might be the next big thing. All I need is the right gimmick. Who's the best manager out there? There's a new golden age of managers. Aaron Bray. Okay, I'll have to look up this Aaron Bray person. There are a handful of old school female managers who really added to a match. Sensational Sherry. Sherry's still in the game. Sherry Martell is still a selectable manager person in this. Spearheading the revolution, Stacy Keebler. What do I have to do to get Miss Vanessa to be considered even better than Stacy Keebler? And the battleground. We've already seen what's going on in the battleground. Charisma. Enigma is the most charismatic mofo we've got. Miss Vanessa's right behind. Then Jamie Dundee as just a regular old wrestler. Then we get down to our other manager, Phil Woods. Oops. Jason Sugarman with the sugar smack. Oh, I meant to check out whether Jason Sugarman is uh, on written contract or not. Did I sign him up for a written contract? Nope, he's on an open contract. Because he's just not a good high-speed guy, and I don't have a lot of just straight-up brawlers. He's just not a great... He's just not an ideal fit for my... Uh, for my roster here. He's a talented enough wrestler. If I were mostly brawlers and technical wrestlers, he would probably be one of my big stars. But uh, that's that's not what I do, as a rule. I do things like Onyx versus Doc Dean. Man, those guys put on a great match, didn't they? What about Doc Dean versus... Onyx. I mean, the road agent didn't say, hey, those guys have great styles that fit each other well. But, I mean, you saw their match, guys. Well, you saw the description of their match. It certainly did make it sound like they were amazing superstars. So, have they gained experience slightly from doing this? Okay. And let's check out the feuds real quick before we move on, because why not? Alright, so Dysfunction is beginning to lead that feud. Draw Clark dot Sexton. Black Dragon and Onyx. So those are all, those feuds are all at five apiece. And these ones are both at one apiece. So yes, very slow burn feuds there. All right, another day. Um, actually, 17th. What do we hear about the training camp? The next graduates will be available on December 20th. So, inter I'm interested to see what will happen then. Because <coughs> I honestly have... I don't remember how that whole deal worked. I mean, I know it doesn't, like, saddle all of them doesn't saddle me to a bunch of wrestlers with, like, written contracts or anything, but, uh, just curious as to what will happen. What will happen next, you guys? Dragon versus Onyx, yeah. <coughs> I think Enigma's gonna come out, and, uh, well, at some point he should announce that match. It doesn't have to be the first thing to happen in the show. Uh, let's have, um... Those two just wrestled, though, didn't they? They actually had a straight-up match last week. 
I really should remember these things. Yeah, Dysfunction and Sebastian Knight had a match last week, so having them have another match would be uh, a little bit much. So they're just going to have to talk across each other. Maybe having Black Dragon and Onyx have a match. That might be something. Is Black Dragon within shouting distance of Onyx at this point, in terms of overness? 56 to 70? I'm getting there. How about having Black Dragon and Onyx be the main event? I like that idea. <coughs> Singles. Black Dragon versus Onyx. Slam! Da, 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 da. Let the boys be boys. This is going to be a win for Black Dragon. Black Dragon is going to cheat to win. And they're going to brawl to the back. This is to continue their feud. As you well know. Actually, this would be a good place for uh, Enigma to uh, announce a pay-per-view match. I think maybe I will make it the... Books a one-on-one -on -one match for the next big event. It's Enigma, and it's gonna be Dysfunction versus... Bleh. I've lost the name now. I'll remember it when I see it. Seb Knight, there you go. For the next big event. Dysfunctio and Sebastian Knight. Todd Sexton should have... Man. Just looking at all these guys, trying to find people. Lazarus. Let's have Todd Sexton have a match against Lazarus. Yes. It is a match. It is a one on one. It's a single match. It is Lazarus versus Todd Sexton. And there is no title on the line. And this is going to be a win for Todd Sexton. Because Lazarus is going to run in. I mean, Jarrell Clark is going to run in. And it's going to be a DQ through interference. And basically this is just because Jarrell Clark doesn't care. Cheryl Clark is not doing this as a favor to Lazarus. He just wants to beat on 
Todd Sexton. Because that's the kind of guy he is. <coughs> a jerk! A scum! Actually, considering the match that uh, the Strongs and Fast and Furious had, how much more over are they now? Roderick, 30. Cedric, also 30. Mevis and Michael, 27 and 28. Interesting. Louis Moxie, 52. Robbie Moxie, 48. So here's what's going to happen right now. Although, again, that's tag feud. That can probably boil over a little slower. Just remember to keep these matches all towards progressing. Some overall plot lines. So, Drell Clark versus Todd Sexton is already being served. Black Dragon and Onyx is already being served in match form. So, Dysfunction and Sebastian Knight. As it turns out, I have managed to push that one to the point where I get all three of those sort of burned. Burn those ones the brightest because they're the biggest feuds, so push them the hardest right now. Mm-hmm. Could make Sebastian Knight fight, uh... No. Jeez. I have a big gap in talent in sort of the middle range of uh, my guys. Don't know if y'all noticed this. I guess I could have either of them fight Magique. Let's see. Dysfunction 49. And... Set Knight 41. Hmm. They're probably okay to just face each other, broadly speaking, but let's go ahead and have Majik face... Well, it makes more sense for the crazy heel to come in and interfere in a match involving Seb Knight. So let's go ahead and have Majik and Sebastian Knight have a little fight. No, this is... <sighs> Booking interviews. Get your head in the game, Bobo. You know what you want to have happen. I want... Majik versus Sebastian Knight. This is going to be a win for Majik. Because Dysfunction's going to run in, and he's going to interfere. Run in for the save, and it's going to be a save by Katsushi Takamura. What? Select the purpose. This is to advance multiple feuds. I don't know if it's going to work. <coughs> but that's going to set up a big tag match at the next show. Then here I am interested in having a match between... right interested in having Robbie and Louis Moxie here face 
Knights, Memphis, and Michael Reigns. There ain't no title on the line. The winner will be Robbie. And the loser is going to be Michael. And you better believe there's going to be interference by Cedric and Roderick. And the Strong Brothers are going to continue their assault. Because they're just bad guys. They just came into the league and they're just trying to do whatever. They're bad. They're bad dudes. That's basically the point I'm trying to get across. They're bad enough dudes to rescue the president, but they won't because they're just not nice. They could rescue the president from ninjas if they wanted to, but they don't want to. They don't even feel like they are obligated to do anything like that. Let's go ahead and have an angle here. On authority angle. And the authority is going to book a one on one. Suspension tonight. Just a one on one fight tonight. It's a one on one fight night. And shoot, I've already forgot what our main event is. Ha 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 ha. Oh, Doc Dean and Onyx, isn't it? No, it's Black Dragon and Onyx. I'm now just pining for that to have been the actual um, angle that I was working, but uh, no, that's... I'm working Black Dragon versus Onyx. Done. Tonight, you will see Onyx and Black Dragon battle in the ring. That's what Enigma is essentially going to say, although he might say it in a different way and more charismatically. Because he's that kind of guy. So I kind of need interviews for all these people. but I don't actually have room for all those. Onyx. Continue their feud. Go ahead and have an interview, single worker with manager. Here is where I'm going to put Miss Vanessa in, talking for Katsushi Takamura. She's going to be going on about, they're going to be going on about Majik. And that is about that feud. Oh, wait, I don't actually need to have them talk about the feud right now. I need to focus more on Dysfunction, Sebastian Knight, Jarrell Clark, and Todd Sexton. All right. Whoops. All right, so... 
let's start here with an interview. A single worker. A lone Sebastian Knight. Out of there. Oh, wait, kitty. Uh, talking about my word. Dysfunction. Not Docty and dysfunction. Continuing the feud. There we go. Making sure real quick, Sebastian Knight is not actually managed by Miss Vanessa, right? Yeah, he's a tweener. That's not how that works. This is going to be an interview. Single worker with Majik. He is going to be targeting Katsush to continue their feud. <coughs> this shows a lot of interviews, I will grant you. Let's have an interview. Uh, there you go. Single worker with manager. It's going to be Miss Vanessa talking for Todd. She's going to be saying that this whole Jarrell Clark thing is totally doable. You, of course, will sort of object and probably say that the inverse is actually the case. Now then, Black Dragon and Onyx have not really had a whole... Well, they have a match tonight. And uh, other than that, they haven't done a whole lot of uh, lead-up for it. Well, no, never mind, I guess. Onyx had an interview, or Black Dragon had an interview there. Let's go ahead and give Onyx some mic time then. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to keep that purpose and finish booking the segment. There we go. Now we have our show ready. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl on the wheel of morality. Turn, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. And getting over us from this segment. Good, good, good. It's a high quality match. Again, though, not a whole lot of people care. Not a lot of overness gained there. Onyx didn't have the best interview. Miss Vanessa backstage with Todd Sexton. They're having a good talk. Good talk, everyone. Magic backstage. Yeah, jeez. Smash Knight. Boy, I tell you, our tweeners, the guys that I thought were charismatic enough to carry the day, they are sort of not. I might need to start parsing those guys over and just making them more solid faces and heels. It'll make it more difficult to uh, sort of book some angles because, you know, the guys won't be uh, <coughs> won't be able to fight both phases and heels, conceivably. Enigma backstage announces Christmas Carnage will see dysfunction in Seb Knight in a battle. Black Dragon and Onyx fucking tear the house down. But he lost overness from the match and is losing overness because of his weak gimmick. Okay, this is the first I've heard of that, but uh, all right. I imagine I'm going to hear about that, aren't I? Think I might be pushing you too high up the card. The fans seem to be resenting you. Well, all right. Black Dragon's losing morale because I don't push him enough. Black Dragon wants to be higher up the card. Onyx is losing morale because I'm not pushing him enough. Another 4-4 rating. And another 132, or whatever it is, for NWAW. Well, I'm sure then the network are very happy with us. Let's go to the 19th. <coughs> I 
whoops, I didn't mean to click the mouse button as many times as I apparently just did. Let's go to the first, second, third. Okay. Let's delete all that mail. Friday, 20th of December. Next graduates, December 20th. Let's go to the meeting land. Head trainer. At the end of December 20th. Does my roster have a bunch of new people on it? Sure doesn't. Let's go back. Let's move on to the next day. On to the nest. I want to see what's happening with this. LW Friday. Okay. Now what does it say? December 20th. Again. My roster does not have any more people. I think it means December 2020. And just didn't quite work out. <coughs> the game was programmed in 2004. It might not have expected that anybody was going to go for more than a decade of booking. But uh, I have. So, haha. -ha. All right. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Let's go ahead and hop forward to the next regular shoe. I'm not sure, actually, that we've had enough time to uh, properly build up all of these feuds, because uh, when is the next big event? Christmas Carnage is on the 28th. Yeah, we only have this show to finish uh, developing these feuds. I don't think we're going to have any well-developed feuds in time. So, all right. I can sort of ease back on trying to make any of these things happen right away. But let's go ahead and check the mail. Next, next, next. Next, next. MLW Friday has been dropped by USA. ROH Wednesday has been dropped by USA. USA is just getting out of the wrestling TV show business. Well, it's... <coughs> it's maybe or maybe not. Um, let me view other shows. I mean, Raw was on USA. I think it might be back to USA now. But, uh, yeah, there are the uh, business of wrestling shows. Although Spike TV is huge in wrestling shows right now. Everybody wants to be on Spike. All right. Well, there you go, folks. I guess this might uh, mean a slight adjustment in uh, my plans for the pay-per-view then. But uh, it's okay. It'll all work out. Um, and when we come back next time, we will book the show before the pay-per-view and see how things transpire. This is Bobo the Vulture. This has been Let's Play Extreme Warfare Revenge. I want to thank you guys very much for watching and hope to see all of you next time. Bye for now.